Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Johnny Mac with five good news stories. Congratulations to an Australian woman. Her bandicoot ravaged yard was dubbed the winner of the world's ugliest lawn competition. Kathleen, you are the winner. The town of Gotland, Sweden, started this contest two years ago to encourage locals to conserve water. The contest went global with lawns in the U.S., Canada, Britain, Germany, France, and Croatia competing for unesthetic honors. Kathleen's lawn features sparse patches of yellow grass, shriveled plants, and dry divots caused by local bandicoots. She tells The Guardian, the bandicoots love digging. That's how they find their favorite food. Now my backyard looks like a real-life hungry, hungry hippo game. She was awarded a pre-owned t-shirt with the phrase, proud owner of the world's ugliest lawn. I might nominate some of my neighbors. Did I say that? I'm sorry. A New Brunswick couple teamed up with some peace officers to rescue a moose. You didn't think I was going to say moose. You thought I was going to say dog, didn't you? No, moose that fell into a river. Couldn't get back out. Jolene and Claude were out for a drive. They spotted a moose that had fallen through the ice into a river. Jolene told the CBC when she spotted us, she tried to get up, and all she could do was slip and fall back into the ice. She couldn't get a grip. We knew if we didn't help her get out, she probably wouldn't be able to make it. She posted a series of videos on Facebook showing her husband venturing out to get on the ice and putting a strap around the moose's back leg. This is like, I mean, I'd call someone. I wouldn't be like, I'll get the moose out. Jolene says the moose was eventually able to stand on its own. I don't know if she knew she was being rescued and it was going to be a happy ending for her, but she was just super calm. All right. Good news if you like cicadas. Now, when I was a kid, I couldn't stand cicadas. I lived in New York City and I don't know, when I was like seven, the cicada noise would drive me nuts. Now that I live in the suburbs, I love it. I can't get enough cicadas. I find them so entertaining, especially when there's like lots of them and they're all over. Well, this spring, both brood, oh, I got to do Roman numerals here. Let's see, uh, nine, brood 19 and brood 13 will both emerge this spring. XIX and XIII, in case you're curious. The last time the cicadas showed up at the same time in the U.S., Thomas Jefferson was the president. If you're in the Midwest or the Southeast, they'll be more plentiful than ever, or at least since the Louisiana Purchase. You see, the Northern Illinois brood is on a 17-year cycle. The Great Southern brood is on a 13-year cycle. If you miss it this spring, it'll be another 221 years before that math works out again. The cicadas will start to appear in late April. They will use their forelegs to tunnel out from the earth, their beady red eyes looking for a spot where they can peacefully finish maturing. A few days later, the males will start buzzing, trying to find a mate. Dr. Floyd Shockley from the Entomology Collections Committee at the Smithsonian. Great name, Dr. Floyd Shockley. Dr. Schlockley says the dual emergence will result in more than one trillion cicadas appearing in the roughly 16th state area. Were you to put one trillion cicadas in a line end to end, it would cover 15,782,828 miles. Now, if you're wondering how long that is, Dr. Shockley tells us that cicada train would reach to the moon and back 33 times. A four-year-old giraffe named Benito is at his new home in a large animal park in central Mexico. Benito was transferred following pressure from animal advocates. He had spent the last year totally alone at a dusty city park in Ciudad Juarez. He was transferred on a crate in the back of a flatbed truck. Frank Camacho is the director of the safari park and says he's been alone for a long time. It's going to take a few days to introduce him to the rest of the herd. But even so, we believe this is a very stable herd and they'll accept him. It all depends on Benito, how he interacts with the herd. And I'll leave you with this one. A woman was kind of surprised. Grandma passed away and was cremated. And the mortician said, do you want her breast implants? You didn't think I was going to say that, did you? No, you didn't think that at all. Normally, non-metal materials are not removed before cremation, but the funeral home decided to take them out anyway. The woman said farewell to grandma, and then a team member from the funeral home took her side and was like, do you want the breast implants? The woman updated on TikTok and said, my aunt has them now in the box they put them in. An expert on cremation on TikTok said if a female has breast implants, they're not removed. Eventually, the body decomposes and becomes a skeleton with fake boobs. And that's your five good news stories for today. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this show. This was a fun one. If you like the show, tell a friend about it. They might like it, too. Have a great day.